This is the Alter Star Wave 101. It's practically a 4 inch refractor. It's one of those refractors that is similar to the Lyra 101 also. And uh, it's practically a Fraunhofer refractor, meaning that F11 means that this telescope doesn't have, this refractor doesn't have any chromatic abrasion or it is very minimal. Uh, and only visible probably in very high power also. Uh, it has a dual speed Crayford focuser, graded uh, draw tube. Love the aluminium uh, knobs and CNC uh, um, cut uh, rings. I've installed it on the uh, Omni XLT series CG4. This is for a Celestron Omni uh, refract um, SCT camera. Uh, a city camera, yeah, a telescope camera, and uh, it's really take it. You can take this one. I'm sure that you can take even a heavier one. And uh, I'm going to observe the tonight, God willing, some of the low galaxies. The object, of course, the the dust cap, the dew shield, is uh, retractable. This is the objective lens. Yeah, I'll put the D shield back and it can come forward again. Just wanted to show you one or two millimeter actually star wave achromatic doublet SH0055. It's quite a nice telescope. Actually, I have a Lyra version of this. This is red, so it's a beautiful telescope to use. I'm observing the planet Jupiter with the Alter Star Wave 101 F11 telescope. And Jupiter is there, just at the tip of my finger. And I'm using a, also a extension column. And uh, Celestron XLT uh, EQ3 tripod and uh, APM 13 millimeter apis. Excellent views. I've seen many views of Jupiter. This is one of the best nights I've ever seen, less turbulent than ever. I looked with APM uh, Skywatch in myriad 5 millimeter. Perfect. With the 30 millimeter Wixen. MLNV, I think, yeah, and that was again perfect view. And that's the excellent telescope lens. It's achromatic, but the view is like apple because of the long focal length 11, f11 focal ratio. Excellent telescope. I can't say how much good is the view with the refractor, the classical refractor, Fraunhofer one. This is that. South equatorial belt, north equatorial belt of Jupiter. Very clear, very clear. And uh, yeah, some notches, some very dark uh, spots, oval shaped. I'm not sure this is the reddest spot, great reddest spot, but uh, I have to check if it is visible at this time. So, beautiful, beautiful, excellent view. I can see five bands under Jupiter.
as, <laughs> as something. And a lot of numerous other ones in the no north, near the north and south poles. And amazing, the colors. So clear. The equatorial belt, north and south equatorial belt, are really, really dark. Rare that it would be so dark and both so clear visible. Two of the satellites, Galilean satellites, are very close together. Probably they're going to eclipse each other. So, very beautiful moment in time to be observing the Jupiter. Oh, I'm looking at the Saturn now. Cassini division. Yeah, visible. I can notice it. It's not it's not completely all the time visible, but you can see hints of it. You can see the uh, the outer ring after the Cassini division. Cassini gap is actually it is, has a different color. It's a little bit kind of whitish blue. And you can see also in the disk of the Saturn some uh, some uh, coloring, kind of equatorial or temperate area, some coloring, which is a little darker than the uh, usual yellow color, yellow beige color of the disk of the Saturn. And of course, the beautiful. Titan, the satellite of the largest satellite of Saturn and the largest one of the largest satellites in the whole solar system. She is actually bigger than the planet Mercury. We have seen it. It has caustic feature <laughs> that, that satellite has caustic feature. Things which resemble karst on the Earth, made of solid methane, methane and nitrogen, <laughs> liquid methane and nitrogen, solid nitrogen, amazing, or oh, water solid, the solid water, <laughs> the rock is formed of that. And between the Titan and the Saturn, I can see another satellite. Uh, if it is not a star. By the way, I'm using the Omegon um, dielectric coated 90 degree mirror, 2 inch 90 degree mirror diagonal. And this is a click lock. Beautiful. The scene is so good, I couldn't resist to bring the Teleview Eaters 8mm 100 degree eyepiece. <laughs> and I can see nine, nine cloud belts of the Jupiter from south to north. Oof! <laughs> Seeing it and transparency of the sky is exceptional to me tonight. We had a long period of uh, you know, cloud and rain, but tonight is so good, so good. You can see so much clumps in the equator north and south equator belt, festoons, they're different color, they're bluish gray. Uh, where actually the uh, the south and north equatorial belts are a kind of dark uh, red to brown color, amazing. But 
But the details visible in the north equatorial belt of Jupiter is amazing. Those festoons and the blue colors, blue gray colors, are in that, uh, the north of that actually, adjacent to the north equatorial belt. Amazing. Ooh, wow. I can now see 11 equatorial belts, 11 cloud belts, I should say, actually. And uh, <laughs> from the from the South Pole to the, the temperate region of the Jupiter, temperate north. That's amazing, so much detail. Between the South equatorial belt and North equatorial belt, I can see at least three more belts. One of them is darker. And the two satellites, I think they were Io and Europa probably, most probably. They're now approach each other, now they're separating. And I mean, from our sight line, line of sight, 